We've had a good run of it. In the 500,000 years Homo sapiens has, have roamed the land, we've built cities, created complex languages, and sent robotic scouts to other planets. It's difficult to imagine it all coming to an end. Yet 99% of all, all species that have ever lived have gone extinct, including every one of our hominid ancestors. In 1983, British cosmologist Brandon Carter framed the Doomsday argument, a statistical way to judge when we might join them. If humans were to survive a long time and spread through the galaxy, then the total number of people who will ever live might number in the trillions. But pure odds, it's unlikely that we'll be, be, be among them, the very first hundredth of percent of all those people. Or turn the argument around. How likely is it that this generation will be the number one lucky? Something like, the, something like one fifth of all people who have ever lived are alive today. The odds of being one of the people to witness Doomsday are highest when there is the largest number of witnesses around. So now is not such an improbable time. Human activity is severely disrupted almost all of life on the planet, which surely doesn't help the matter. The current rate of extinctions is by some estimates 10,000 times the average in the fossil record. At present, we may worry about snail darters and red squirrels in abstract terms, but the next statistic on the list could be S. Yes. Natural disasters. The first is asteroid impact. Once the disaster scenario gets the cheesy Hollywood treatment, it's hard to take it seriously. But there is no question that a cosmic interloper will hit Earth, and we won't have to wait millions of years for it to happen. In 1908, a 200-foot-wide comet fragment slammed into the atmosphere and exploded over the Tunguska region in Siberia, Russia, with nearly 1,000 times the energy of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Astronomer, astronomers estimate similar-sized events occur every one to three centuries. Impacts are most likely to occur over the ocean, and small ones that happen over land are most likely to affect unpopulated areas. But with big asteroids, it doesn't matter much where they land. Objects more than a half mile wide which strike Earth every 250,000 years or so, would touch off firestorms followed by global cooling from dust kicked up by the impact. Humans would likely survive, but civilization might not. An asteroid five miles wide would cause major extinctions like the one that may have marked the end of the age of dinosaurs. <laughs> gamma ray burst. If you could watch the sky with gamma ray vision... You might think that you were being stalked by cosmic paparazzi. Once a day or so, you would see a bright flash appear, briefly outshine everything else, then vanish. These gamma ray bursts, astrophysicists recently learned, originate in distant galaxies and are unfathomably powerful. The bursts probably result from the merging of two collapsed stars. Once the burst begins, however, there would be no missing its fury. At a distance of 1,000 light years, farther than most of the stars you can see on a clear night. It would appear about as bright as the sun. Earth's atmosphere would initially protect us from most of the burst's deadly x-rays and gamma rays, but at a cost. The potent radiation would cook the atmosphere, creating nitrogen oxides that would destroy the ozone layer. Without the ozone layer, ultraviolet rays from the sun would reach the surface at nearly full force, causing skin cancer and, more seriously, killing off the tiny photosynthetic plankton in the ocean that provide oxygen to the tiny atmosphere and bolster the bottom of the food chain. Human-triggered disasters. Nanotechnology disaster. Before you've gotten the keyboard dirty, your home computer is obsolete, largely because of incredibly rapid progress in miniaturizing circuits on silicon chips. Engineers are using the same technology to build crude atomic scale machines, inventing a new field as they go called nanotechnology. Within a few decades, maybe sooner, it should be possible to build microscopic robots that can assemble and rec replicate themselves. They might perform surgery from inside a patient, build any desired product from simple raw materials, or explore other worlds. All well and good if the technology works, as intended. After an an industrial accident, he writes, bacteria-sized machines could spread like blowing pollen, replicate swiftly, and reduce the biosphere to dust in a matter of days. 
It is easy to envision nanomachines as the perfect precision military or terrorist tools. Local self-destruction. Global war. Together, the United States and Russia still have almost 19,000 active nuclear warheads. Nuclear war seems unlikely today, but a dozen years ago, the demise of the Soviet Union also seemed rather unlikely. Political situations evolved. The bombs remain deadly. There is also the possibility of an accidental nuclear exchange. And a ballistic missile defense system, given current technology, will catch only a handful of stray missiles. Assuming it works at all. Other types of weaponry could have global effects as well. Japan began experimenting with biological weapons after World War I, and both the United States and the Soviet Union experimented with killer germs during the Cold War. Compared with atomic bombs, bioweapons are cheap, simple to produce, and easy to conceal. They are also hard to control. Although that unpredictability could appeal to the terrorist organization, John Leslie, a philosopher at the University of Guelph in Ontario, points out that genetic engineering might permit the creation of ethnic biological weapons that are tailored to attack primarily one ethnic group. Here we're going to have a one and a half minute video on an atomic bomb. Robots take over. People create smart robots which turn against us and take over the world. Oh, we've seen this in movies, TV, and comic books for decades. After all these years, look around and still, no smart robots. Yet Hans Morovich, one of the founders of the robotics department of Carnegie Mellon University, remains a believer. By 2014, he predicts, machines will match human intelligence and perhaps human consciousness. Then they'll get even better. He envisions an, event, an eventual symbiotic relationship between human and machine, with the two emerging into post-biologicals capable of vastly expanding their intellectual power. Marvin Minsky, an artificial intelligence exper expert at MIT, foresees a similar future. People will download their brains into computer-enhanced mechanical surrogates and log into nearly boundless files of information and experience. Whether this counts as the end of humanity or the next stage in evolution depends on your point of view. To his credit, Minsky recognizes that the merger of human and machine lies quite a few years away. Now we have greater forces directed against us. Divine intervention. Judaism has the book of Daniel. Christianity has the book of Revelation. Islam has the coming of Mahdi. Zoroastrianism has a count on to the arrival of the third son of the Zoroaster. The stories and their interpretations vary widely but the underlying concept is similar. God intervenes in the world, bringing history to an end and ushering in a new moral order. Apocalyptic thinking runs at least back to Egyptian mythology and right up to the Heaven's Gate and Y2K mania. More worrisome, to the non-believers at least, are the doomsday cults that prefer to take holy retribution into their own hands. In 1995, Members of the Aum Shinro Kyo sect unleashed sarin nerve gas into Tokyo subway station, killing 12 people and injuring more than 5,000. Had things gone as intended, the death toll would have been hundreds of times greater. A more determined group, armed with more lethal weapons, nuclear, biological, nanotechnological even, could have done far more damage.